hello and welcome to this episode of loving me creatively i'm your self-love guru host chris nascowash welcome to this space if this is your first time yay you made it to your start of integrating loving yourself creatively this is a place of contemplation and transformation loving me creatively is a podcast that i created to support my own exploration and in my sharing with others so in this space we're going to be talking about creativity we're going to be exploring self-love wellness and awakening the inner divine feminine in us all I like to start off every episode with a little time to contemplate. I like to throw in a dash of humor and share some personal stories of my own healing creatively and end with an opportunity for us together to transform. And I do that by channeling a special meditation so welcome to loving me creatively thank you so much for joining me this is episode three and in numerology three represents the spark of creativity the creative energy so we'll see what comes through today on this third day and actually today's date when added up equals three so (laughs) it was meant for me to record this episode today so welcome welcome how has everyone been i'm just curious because you know this shift in the north node with the retrogrades that are going on right now whoo it's a doozy and actually it is creating a spark of energy to explore and contemplate further so for those that are less familiar with astrology venus goes retrograde less often than our other planets and because it comes closer to earth um, than other planets do it really does have an impact on us so we're going to be in this retrograde through june 25th And during this time, you might expect a little bit of extra friction or shifting than a normal pattern or your normal pattern in your love life or things that have to do with what Venus is ruler of. So things that are beautiful, um, things that are pleasurable, our love, those are all aspects of what Venus rules and with it going retrograde in Gemini um, this is actually a really interesting time because Gemini as you all probably know is a air sign and it is a very free spirit sign Um, my sun sign is Gemini and so you know the need for freedom for flexibility is super important to me and actually what might occur um, is when venus goes retrograde there might be a feeling or a need for our personal freedom Um, and so that might bring some monogamous relationships a little bit of a challenge but when we know about retrogrades we can um, think thoughtfully about what's coming up for us also since venus is going retrograde in gemini gemini also is the ruler of our communication and our thoughts so since gemini is in this space we might feel that there are some things coming up around our thinking patterns and so so getting really heady about things that are coming up We might have some old flames pop up or maybe you're the old flame popping up in somebody's life and you we might find ourselves overthinking or engaging a lot being really in our mind gemini taking the rule of our love life so all things related to beauty and love we're going to get into our head a lot and we might 
overthink past, present, and future, and we might forget, um, we might forget that we are living in a present moment, um, or as it is called, the infinite now. And so being really thoughtful around that, we need to also be considerate about things that we think are beautiful and that we want to receive pleasure and how that maybe is affecting um, our use of our money right now. There also might be some sensitivities that come up for a few um, related to codependency um, and paranoia around money and love. Now, because Venus is retrograde, I wanted to bring this up and contemplate together since we are still in this, you know, COVID safer at home kind of uh, situation here in the United States. In my desire to have a focal point for these episodes, I pulled three cards and the three cards that were pulled were the lover's card, the moon card, and the judgment card. The lover's card came up while this is a loving me creative space and the lover's card usually represents a mate a matehood but it could also be a relationship with yourself or the duality within um, i wasn't really sure what was going to come up but now with this venus retrograde i know exactly the reason that this lover's card came up because us really thinking about our relationships and the love that is shared between them and that it is a choice is a really important aspect of Gemini being retrograded with Venus right now. Um, the moon and the judgment card were also a lot of really interesting things for me to think about how we could utilize the energies that are coming through. Now the moon talks a lot about creativity, imagination, our intuition. Um, things that are often hidden are hidden truths. And so thinking about Venus in Gemini retrograde at this time, I wanted to contemplate a bit about love. And I wanted to contemplate a little bit about our relationship with love. And I've been going through my own personal journey of redefining what love is for me. And it started first with self-love and really honing into creatively maladapting what is love and how does that express itself when I think of myself. It has led to this entire work of honing in on self-love wellness but what is love, you know? Well, oftentimes when asked, surveyed, if you will, what is love? People would have a varied list of things, but often, more often than not, you might hear things like respect, you know, say something like shared time, it might say something like communication, it might say something like reciprocity, you know, all these different things. And I encourage you to contemplate what is love for you. If you were to create a list of all the things that love means for you, what would you say? What would those bullet points be? What would it look like? And thinking about that helps us to hone in on love with others. You know, what does love mean, not just for myself, but what does it mean in its larger scope? And right now, Venus going retrograde, we might be in our minds thinking a lot about uh, the past, our past love, our past experience with with love in all aspects our friendship our familiar relationships with our family members and so it can mean a lot of things and so as we pull in the energy of the moon card into this dialogue is for us to begin to tap into a deeper sense of love that's connected with our creativity our sacral chakra and our intuition 
and it allows us to begin to see the hidden truths that lie around what is love to us and how we've been exposed and, and how it's been formulated. Because for me, if I think about love and, and the amount of time that I've invested in my healing journey to explore what is love, reciprocity is at the top of that list. Equitability, reciprocity, having a give and a take between the two. And the second thing on that list would be communication. Because again, I'm a Gemini, <laughs> Gemini and Venus retrograde. Communication is so important. It's so important. And so what happens when we experience a connection with other self? And we have an idea of what is this love. Why do we even share time and space with others? Why do we come into this form to be humans? It's to experience love in this tangible way, in the human way, through our five senses. And so love is grander than those five senses, but we do use them to inform our experiences. Love has also been connected with pain, with grief, with sadness, whether it's a parent passing away, a close person that you love leaving their body and no longer being on earth. Perhaps it's a romantic love, a breakup. Perhaps it's a friendship you move away or somehow you the friendship dissolves and didn't even know how or didn't even know why or maybe there was a um, rejection of some sort where this person or a person leaves or maybe you do that and the feelings that come up when we have love we experience love and it's also simultaneously connected to the deepest parts of ourself that's associated with fear because once we've had an experience that doesn't feel positive then we create in our mind our our actual brain creates a file like a computer and it recalls information and it does this so beautifully and wonderfully meant to help us access information, move information, make faster decisions. Such a beautiful thing, this brain of ours. And also because it's so powerful, because pain is so powerful, we don't want to feel it again. And our instinct is we don't want to feel the fear again. And so things come up associated with our experiences and we connect it to the idea of love. Do you resonate? Because what the third card that came out, the judgment card, lends itself to this the storyline but in the sense of the word judgment the way that we use it in our human vernacular judgment is a perception of right and wrong good and bad it's, it's a dichotomous perspective and so judgment seeps into our mind around the idea of love we judge ourselves, or we shame ourselves. Shaming is a part of judgment. It, they, they have a, a, a codependent relationship. <laughs> they are sister cousins or brother cousins. They are family. Um, and so judgment brings shaming. Judgment is the um, abstract cognitive value and shame, shaming is connected more with a approach, a behavior that we would do unto someone else. So you, we could see the difference in both words that they mean something different, but they are one and the same. So the judgment sometimes is 
a toxic narrative that lives in our mind that had been dropped in from a family member, a friend, or a social relationship of some sort that we've received. And so the idea of the judgment comes from someone else outside of us and or we internalize it and the judgment becomes something that we say to ourselves. Like, I shouldn't have dated that person. What a waste of my time. So Venus and retrograde brings up a lot of these things because we do we we do think about our past experiences and we and we place it in the mind where Gemini rules and it's easy especially in the colonized reality that we have all experienced at this point and we are slowly moving out of as we move into the new earth that the judgment that comes with us actually can also bring um, moments for us to transcend because we have the opportunity to transmute the fear with the awareness of the fear into the awakening so my contemplation for you in this story using the energy of the lovers card the moon the judgment card and venus being retrograde is I want us to think about and contemplate the concept of forgiveness. So what is forgiveness? What does forgiveness have to do with love? And what does it have to do with the aspects of judgment, the judgment card representing Pluto? in our awakening process, in our transformation process, our transitions that we go through. What is forgiveness? Now, when we've experienced something that is hurtful, painful, um, just is traumatic in some way, even if it's not something that we would classify as trauma because it's not to a severity, or we would classify it as something very impactful in our life. And I would say that when we experience pain connected to love, um, it is so powerful. Because David Icke, for those that are unfamiliar with David Icke, I would look into his interview on the Freedom Platform with Brian Rose um, at London Real. David Icke said something really powerful in his third interview. He says, says that love is the absence of fear. Love has no fear. And so the fear that comes up with experiencing something that was not pleasurable and that didn't allow us to feel safe or secure brings up a lot of uncomfortable, unsavory emotions and thoughts when it comes to love. I wanted to contemplate forgiveness with you because in my journey of healing and creatively engaging my self-love, really look at how do I treat myself? How do I talk to myself? What's so powerful in the notion of forgiveness is its capacity to really heal. And so I charge us with the food for thought on what is forgiveness for us as we bask <laughs> in the energy of Venus retrograde in Gemini and really thinking about love, contemplations of love. What does love look like in the sense of how we perceive it with ourself and how does it look like when it has to do with others and does it look the same or does it look different when it's a romantic relationship and a romantic love versus a friendship love versus a parental love 
versus the love that we have with other species on this planet, like plants. You know, when there isn't a, um, you know, plants, there is no nothing malice that we can ever experience. Even an animal. And some might debate that. <laughs> Please feel free to share with me your, your thoughts about that. But even animals, because animals are, in my, uh, my perspective, coming from a very instinctual place. And there isn't um, other layers of the brain that are uh, like the executive functioning part of the brain where we are pre-planning. You know, like if a lion wants to eat you and it's going to track you down and eat you. Um, it's not going to lie to you about wanting to, <laughs> wanting to eat you. Um, so what does forgiveness look like to you? And I'll leave our first section, our first segment today with contemplating forgiveness. Because I'd like to move into our second segment by sharing with you my story. And my relationship with forgiveness and what has been the very coarse part of my healing the self, healing my past self and healing my present self has really been charged and, and expanded beautifully through the notion of forgiveness. If we were to define forgiveness, it represents a process of forgiving or being forgotten. But really forgiveness from a, a more deeper sense, a conscious, deliberate decision that we make to release our feelings of resentment or vengeance or even judgment and shame towards a person or self who's harmed us. So forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean forgetting and it doesn't mean acceptance or condoning actions, behaviors that have been unacceptable that it crossed a boundary but it, it is instead a conscious action to release the hold and when I think about this from a spiritual and energetic perspective I think about the cords the energetic cords that we have with the people that we love and the, the more that we engage with time and effort we share our mind we share our thoughts, we share our emotions with our bodies, and we share our bodies through physical touch. We create unique cords that run throughout our body to other people. And these cords are energetic cords that create a connection with one person or a group of people. And so that's why in spiritual work and energetic healing work, uh, we will use the term energy cords to describe uh, different aspects or different uh, pinpointed elements of where our healing might need to be focused on. Forgiveness for me, you know, loving myself creatively has meant for me to really creatively maladapt and resist the colonial narrative so that part of my decolonization process has been woven in with the forgiveness because the colonizer would benefit from a mindset that shames itself, that judges itself, that oppresses itself. And so that has been what is created in the colonized reality. And so in my own 
loving myself creatively has been that creative maladaption, the resistance to the narrative, the decolonization. And so forgiveness has been part of that. But the most deepest part of my healing has been really forgiving myself in the codependent patterns that had been created in my life based on my traumas. So the fears of rejection and isolation that are deeply rooted in my psyche and that are directly connected to my familiar relationships or my relationship with my family system when I was a child, those things directly cor correlated to my ongoing pattern of needing to be in connection and needing to be validated by others and needing to be included. The need to be included has been so strong in my life. Prior to my self-healing journey, like many of you out there, I know what it's like to make decision after decision after decision, constantly engaging in these uh, friendships, relationships that didn't feel full or whole. There wasn't reciprocity, but I accepted what was being given because I just accepted that that's what I deserved in fear that I would be alone, that I would have nothing and no one. Again, connected to my childhood. And in my forgiveness journey for myself, I had to come to the self-realization that that was the pattern I was engaging in. And even though I had made some self-realization, really working through that required me to lean on support. Because doing it solely on my own, just with, in my own thoughts, in my own head, was not going to allow me the liberation and the releasing that I needed but engaging in meditation and specifically working on the self-loving kindness allowed me to forgive. forgive. And forgiving others sometimes seems easier than forgiving the self. But I have a uni interesting perspective on that because I would, I would p push the conversation to consider that while maybe you can forgive the other, do you really let go? Because if you haven't forgiven yourself, resentment will creep up because the forgiveness is only in the mind. And while I did say the definition is a conscious decision, it is part of the mind because the mind is you know, the way that we engage with our consciousness. But our consciousness is beyond our mind itself. It's beyond just the brain. And so forgiving ourselves in a much deeper way through all the layers of our energy really does support our deepest layers of healing. And so forgiveness had to be for me I had to start with, you know what, self, I see why you engage in codependent relationships, even though it doesn't feel fulfilling. I understand why you made that choice. I understand why that was so traumatic for you when that person left and just ghosted after engaging in such deep love and time, how could that person do that? And resisting, creatively maladapting against the narrative of I wasn't good enough. Uh, because I will be authentic and say that it did sometimes. And I had to forgive myself for thinking those thoughts. And forgive myself for, for thinking that I needed to. I should have done this. I should have done that. Because that isn't compassionate communication through self-talk. That is a very shaming self-talk. And a very judgment-driven self-talk. 
and a better way for us to awaken and to transition, rebirth ourselves, is to allow ourselves to be kind to ourselves. And as we as we are kind to ourselves, we are able to forgive ourselves when these toxic narratives come up. Because it is part of what so many of us are going through. Because we've experienced the colonial reality. There are intergenerational patterns that this trickles down through. And so once I was able to forgive myself, it has been easier for me to forgive others. And I will say that sometimes it takes a while. And with Venus going retrograde, I have been experiencing some things that have been coming up. I have met someone many years ago who told me that we were ten, twin flames and I believed that person. It felt like a truism. And the relationship was just very um, like a whirlwind. Come into my life, stir things up, and then leave. And then come into my life, stir things up, and then leave. I've come to recognize the pattern. But still, I miss this person. I miss their smile. I miss their intuitive knowing. I miss their mind most of all. And so forgiving myself now for being in my feels, feeling sad, to forgive myself, to allow myself this emotion. And I encourage you to allow yourself to feel your emotions. Treat them, treat yourself like you would a very dear friend. Embrace it. Embrace yourself. Do it creatively in the way that feels good. Maybe embracing yourself is doing something new. Maybe it's doing something familiar. Maybe it's taking a bath. Maybe it's writing. Maybe it's doing a podcast <laughs> whatever it is for you and allow yourself to be awakened through this forgiveness process because we awaken the waters within that allow us to begin to restructure our DNA and change the very nature of our physical body so that we can be moving in new ways, expansive ways that align more with the creative trueness of who we are. Because with our beautiful imagination, we can create a present and we can imagine a future that is all the things we deserve all the things we desire the more that we get hung up on our past it only stops our capacity to create the future because the law of attraction means it's going to attract what we're putting out there if we're putting out there regret that's we're gonna we're gonna create more of that and so as we forgive we can allow ourselves to feel our feels, to miss that person, or maybe to miss the person we used to be. We can allow that to come up and to tell ourselves that we forgive ourselves for thinking negatively about our past experiences because truly what the truism is, is that all of our experiences give us a beautiful layer of wisdom a wealth of knowledge because we then begin to learn more deeply where and how does our soul orientate in what direction 
in what way does our soul truly ask us to go towards? And as we do this, we open ourselves up for our transformation and rebirth. And that's powerful because the moon card that I pulled for this podcast was really talking about the secrets and hidden truths of the unconscious mind and reminding us not to let our mind get away from us. So tap into your intuition by finding the love within. And by doing that, we love ourselves creatively. And I encourage you to do the same. Ah, oh, that was quite a segment. <laughs> I need a breather. But uh, that brings us to our very last segment of Loving Me Creatively. Where we get to engage in our transformation and rebirth. So as I take a breath, please take a moment. Find yourself a cozy place to relax and begin to listen to the sounds that lie around you. Welcome to segment three of Loving Me Creatively. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we are going to be using Jade. I like to have this little process of going through my collection and feeling the energy who wants to come along for the ride. And uh, I close my eyes and just let the body lead. And the jade decided to join us. It is uh, my beautiful jade uni egg. You see jade prolifically used in the Mayan culture and was connected to deep spiritual meaning. The jade was considered to be divine and um, was much more sacred than gold would be considered, as well as representing characteristics of life, fertility, and power and um, was really a very powerful gem used for healing, um, considered to be able to cure diseases of all types. With its green color, jade represents the heart chakra. Um, in Mayan, it represented the very the crown chakra, it represented the uh, connection to the mind and to the cosmos. 
-huh. Jade is connected to the zodiac signs of Aries, Taurus, Gemini, and Libra. Hey, Gemini. We are experiencing Venus and Gemini. And so what a synchronistic uh, connection. It is an earth element and it has a vibration of the number 11. So number 11 is a master number and that's beautiful. Healing with Jade offers us so many beautiful benefits, including, um, as mentioned with the Mayans, aspects of our fertility. It brings with us aspects of tranquility and balance, harmony and peace as well as perspective taking and wisdom and offers us the capacity to feel stable and so on, our stability. And so in this way, Jade is beautiful for its purity and its nature, offering us a capacity to increase our love and our nurturing. It's a very protective stone and it helps to bring harmony to the person who is using it. So. During this meditation, I'm feeling that we are going to be harnessing harmony and using that to ground us as we look to build forgiveness in our heart. Um, jade also attracts good luck and friendship. So if you have a jade in your collection or if you feel inspired to go get one, please do. Um, it stabilizes our personality and it helps to promote self-sufficiency so it really helps us with taking a more logical perspective taking during this time with venus being in gemini not getting too caught up in our thoughts about our emotions rather um, allowing us to release negative thoughts in the mind beautiful gem helps soothes us as we do this process stimulates our ideas it's a dream stone and Jane brings some insightful dreams to us. So, wow, how synchronistic again, the universe knows our intention and the body provides. So thank you so much universe for guiding me to this beautiful Jade today. Um, and if you remember, as I shared in segment one and two, that the moon card came up in the tarot for us and of course the moon represents what the dreams might reveal in our unconscious mind and those secret hidden truths so this is beautiful it helps us with our dreams and helps us again release our emotions and our irritability and encourages us to just be who we are step into our purpose so beautiful we're activating the heart chakra today so that's what we're going to be doing and um yes let's get into it take a swig of water i encourage you to also do the same i'm grounding myself with a quartz clear quartz so I want to encourage you to just get into a comfortable place. Notice your body, settle. What parts of the body is touching the ground? Just notice your breathing, notice your body, notice the air, how does it feel like in the lung as you increase your chest, and decrease your exhale. Notice the sound of the air as it goes in your nose. Out. Just settle into this.
as you notice your body I'd like us to sync up our breath so we can gain the benefit of our shared energy it's best to empty out the belly completely and we would tuck in the belly button with our exhalations and feeling our lung completely with our inhalations on three let's take three breaths together one two three breathe in to three one two three hold release with the sigh breathe in hold breathe out with a sigh one more time counting to three breathe in comfortable breathing feeling your body relaxed further noticing your shoulders relaxed your body's relaxed your legs your arms you feel your lashes relaxed with your toes your fingers you're in a laying position or sitting position have your palms opened upwards palms open we call in the beautiful energy of jade to support this meditation today as you feel your body relaxed Notice your chest rise and fall, rise and fall. As you notice your breath. Notice your, your chest rise with your inhalations and fall with your exhalations. Notice your body sink into the floor a bit deeper. And notice as you breathe in a light begins to build brighter inside your chest as you breathe in and you breathe out breathe in and breathe out notice this light grow bright and begin to feel your body moving south to your tummy where it flickers like the sun deeper darker rooted with mother earth 
as well as above in the throat, speaking truths connected up further to our third eye chakra between the eyebrows. Our energy has filled our body and is now ready to release from the crown, the top of our head. As we breathe in, we see our energy expand throughout our body, out our crown, and back into our feet. As we exhale, we see the energy come back to us. And breathe out this energy spiral. Breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. And we see our energy flowing through us like a beautiful sphere of light. We are protected in this seed, embraced by Mother Earth. Embraced by our light. See this energy spiral around you, dancing beautifully with each inhalation and exhalation. Take a breath of this beautiful energy as it fills you with beautiful bliss, joy. Your heart raises to your throat and you feel this energy spiraling in and out of your body. You feel your chest expand. You take deeper breaths, holding this beautiful energy for as long as you can comfortably. Exhaling when ready, slowly and easy. Breathing in once more, holding as much of the energy as possible. Releasing when comfortable, calmly and peacefully. We feel this energy expand our heart, raise our chin, raise our heart, and we are open and ready for our rebirth. As you breathe in and out this beautiful energy, notice its colors, notice its movements, notice the dances, the spins, the twirls and jumps just for you. Feel your energy expand and contract in this beautiful seed, protected and embraced with Mother Earth. Feel yourself connected in this embrace to all others that she loves. All those that you love. all those that they love, and so on. Connected, synchronistically, divinely, with each other human, with each other animal, with each other plant, with other planets 
and galaxies and dimensions. Allow this energy to expand and now feel your energy in your heart expand and open and rise into the midpoint of your eyebrow. What fears lie within the heart? What lies? Delusions and delusions lie hidden beneath the unseen. Where do we like to awaken? How will this movement align? What fears lie in the heart space? Allow our intuition to open up to the cosmos as our J gem opens up our energy, allowing us to tap into our intuition, tap into regulating our emotions and allowing us to Feel the harmony. What lies or simply lies and can be released without effort. What does not belong to you in this space? What is not yours to keep but must and easily be purged with each exhalation Allow your third eye to open up and to tap into your dream unconscious states. Allow the messages to be received at this time. Opening yourself up to the universal consciousness. The inspiring imaginative creative thoughts will be sparked in this space to allow new realities to be formed. Noticing the delusions and illusions in the heart space as they are purged. Feel your energy become lighter as you purge with each exhalation, with your intentional purging of the fears. Allow only the love to reside. Allow only the love to reside. Feel your energy lighten. You're floating. You're peaceful. You feel the love. And you feel the forgiveness and you purge and you forgive. When you are ready, repeat after me. I acknowledge my heart. I see my heart. I love my heart. I understand I am having a human experience. I understand my emotions. I understand my soul's purpose spoken to me through my intuition. I activate my dream state to allow hidden truths that lie in my subconscious. 
to be activated now. I acknowledge my heart and I love my heart. I am kind to my heart and I am kind to my human experience. I allow my intuition to dissolve fears that might be hiding I invite my intuition to speak to me through my dreams. I let go of shaming. I release judgments of past choices. I leave only love and I purge all the fear. I acknowledge my human experience. I acknowledge my evolution and I am ready for my new experiences. I open myself up to peace and harmony. I create my peace and my harmony. I love myself creatively every day. So be it and so it is. Take a deep breath with me. Empty your belly. Breathe in. Holding. Exhaling out the mouth when no longer serves you. And feel yourself relax further. As you feel your body expand with these truths that you've spoken and you've enacted your timelines have started they have begun you have begun your future rooted in your love feel your body light Feel your energy come back from your third eye chakra to your heart as you lean into this beautiful energy in the heart as it pulsates through your body, around your body like a vortex, vortex. opening a portal your journey into your healing. Take a couple of deep breaths to allow this energy to be merged with your entire body. These truths to be an integrated part of your physical body and so it will respond and align with your emotional and mental shifts as your intuitive higher self will begin to communicate to you in a more fluid way. 
Allow yourself to be open to these connections as I offer my gratitude to our angels, spirit guides, and ancestors of love and light who have chosen to come join us during this time. We thank you for always being present and allowing us and reminding us that we are just a part of this beautiful experience of life and there are so many more dimensions that exist simultaneously with ours. We are never alone. We are always connected and we are connected. Thank you, energies, for reminding me of this as we forgive ourselves forever buying into the illusion that we are somehow alone or we are truly isolated because we are surrounded by beautiful energies. So. <sighs> Thank you for that emotional reminder, our spirits. I I encourage you to place your hands in front of your heart and bow in your head in reverence of this beautiful love that lies within and the beautiful love that is around us and is abundant, always ready for us to tap in whenever we need. I am so very happy to share this time with you. I bow my head in reverence to your divinity as mine sees yours. And I am you and you are me, and we are we. As you wiggle your toes and flicker your lashes into your consciousness. Wow, that was a beautiful energetic transmission that came through to the end. Thank you, oh, beautiful Jade, for that beautiful energy and opening up of the third eye. That was a beautiful experience. And thank you so much for joining me in, in this time. And thank you for joining me in this Loving Me Creatively podcast because this is truly of my heart to yours in my sharing of my journey and just opening myself up to you, whoever is listening to this. If I am, if we are feeling called to each other, let's connect. You can find me on social at Self Love Creatives. You can find all my beautiful artistic fun at Kisses for Liberation. You can be inspired to actively create your own unique expressions as you love yourself creatively. If you are activated by grassroots social justice projects, please join me in my global justice project at Social Change Coalition. We are a community organization activating an agent of change mindset, so please join us there. And if you feel called to go deeper, dive deeper in your creative reflection and diving deeper in your contemplations, how do you reflect and what mentorship are you receiving in this reflection? Because Mentorship can help us, scaffold us, build our skills so that we can be able to move from our current state into the state that we desire. And some support is helpful because, as I said, we are not alone. We have each other. And those that are called to work with me are part of my soul cluster. And we have a purpose on this planet and we are walking in our purpose. And I encourage you to connect with me at 
selflovecreatives.com where I offer one-on-one mentorship and coaching for those leaders who are ready to step into their purpose and act as an agent of change by decolonizing the body-mind and activating their self-love wellness. So selflovecreatives.com for all of that. And thank you again for joining me um, joining me this week for Loving Me Creatively. Join me every Thursday for your transformation. And I look forward to next time. Don't forget to love yourself creatively today. Love you. Until next time.